Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of my Bush Gardens Williamsburg recreation. Last episode I took you on a little tour of the park layout, all the rough draft sketches of our coasters and placing things together. And today, as you can see, we've made some significant progress on the front of the park. I have been working diligently on getting the front area, the England area, and Sesame Street Forest of Fun built out. And I'm really liking the way things are shaping up so far. At least for our, our first pass through here. If you remember from last time I mentioned we've got our, our front gates up here with our some ticket booths. Uh, we've got a little restroom over here. We've got plenty of peeps in the park too and they're walking around having a great time getting lost because there's literally nothing up to do here except go to the bathroom. Not some not some great pathfinding, but we'll it's a problem for the future, I guess. Figure out how to, to fix all that. Oh yeah, lots of people getting lost over here. This is this is great. So yeah, I think I'm gonna have to either delete some of these paths, maybe proxy some stuff, or maybe worst case scenario, move the entrance. I really don't want to have the entrance over here where like the main gates are, just because I feel like it makes more sense to have peeps wandering around up here in this front plaza. But like I said, I'll figure that out some other time. I think all these people over here are trying to get across to the Sesame Street area, so probably put in some hidden path over here to, to connect these two to make it easier for people to get around. Uh, but yeah, past the front gate area, past the ticket booths, we have the main entrance into the England area. This one has been pretty tricky for me to figure out. So if you've ever been here or if you've ever seen photos of Bush Gardens and compared it to the pieces available in RCT, uh, these like tutor pieces from the Europe theming look exactly like what you would see in Bush Gardens. Like these wall pieces fit perfectly with the kind of buildings that we need to make for this area. Unfortunately, they're not very versatile. Like you've got these flat walls and you have some of these gigantic roof pieces that are, are very steep and very chunky. So that leads you to building some pretty clunky looking buildings. So I'm trying to mix and match a little bit of different pieces. We've got some of the Tudor walls. We've got some of the Dark Age pieces, the Dark Age village roofs, as well as some of the like vanilla RCT1 roofs. Just trying to mix and match those so that it looks a little bit more varied, a little bit less like, you know, expansion RCT2, because I'm not a big fan of the way that stuff looks, but some of those textures just really do work well for a Europe themed park. You know, who'd have thought? Fortunately, like I said before, there isn't a whole lot going on in the England area anyway, as far as rides go. So if I need to shuffle stuff around to make my walls look different, reprofile some of these buildings, hopefully won't be too big of a lift in the future. But yeah, stuff like uh, this theater, it's a very circular building. You cannot make a circular building out of expansion pieces. It just is not possible because these, these are the squarest wall pieces you've ever seen. Not a huge fan of the way this building has turned out, so we'll probably go back and reprofile it later. But we do have a our th globe theater in here for people to do something. So yeah, I don't know if this is a like a great first impression for the park. It looks nice in real life, but yeah, it's it it's okay. I guess it could be worse. I think if you're gonna use the expansion scenery pieces for anything, I guess uh, a very Europe themed theme park is probably the place to do it. Like I said, I've been trying to keep things interesting by mixing and matching some textures, uh, using some different walls, some different roofs. I got these little flags strung up here with a with little ride vehicles, so just little other ways to keep things decorated. I think it looks okay. Another piece of contention for me, I've been spending way too long trying to figure out how to build this stupid clock tower in the middle. It's supposed to look a little bit like the clock tower from the Houses of Parliament, but with RCT, you've only got one size tile and it looks really terrible here if you use the same shape of walls for the whole tower. So I need to play around and see if I can figure out some other pieces that would make a better clock tower here because not a big fan of the way that looks. But, you know, details, I suppose. I think it's a, it's a good start for England. Definitely needs some, some polish. Definitely could stand to clean up a little bit. For now, it'll do. Uh, next door to that, we have a Sesame Street Forest of Fun, which is pretty much complete at this point. Just a couple of rides in here. We've got uh, our Oscars Whirly Worms, which is a Zamperla Rockin' Tug. So it's like a really tiny disco. 
and I'm using some coaster cars here to kind of emulate the ride vehicle. Doesn't spin, but whatever. It kind of gets the point across. We have a mini drop tower. I wish you could make drop towers in RCT that were smaller than this, but this is kind of the smallest you can make and still use the this uh, chain lift design. This design I um, got from uh, Astray Life's channel, Open RCT Do Tutorials. Use some chain lift hacks to make this uh, car bounce up and down. It looks really cool, it works really well. In the scale of my park here, it's a little bit big, but maybe there's nothing I can do about it at this point. Uh, I've also got a water ride over here, Bert and Ernie's Lock Adventure. It's just a little boat ride. It doesn't do anything but go in a circle, but peeps freaking love this thing for some reason. Uh, it's got terrible stats, but it's got the biggest line you've ever seen. And man, they just love these boats that go in a circle. So, you know, I'm not gonna judge. I probably would enjoy going on it too. And finally over here, we've got Grover's Alpine Express, which looks really great, I think, actually. after. I put all the surroundings in here, the scenery, the station, the foliage, the walls, everything. I think it turned out really nice. Uh, the pink track really pops, but everything else feels like it fits in this zone really well, so I'm really happy with this. The real coaster train has a big Grover sculpture on the front for the first car. So I have a little panda, little panda car here to represent that. I think that turned out really nice. So yeah, I'm really happy with, with Grover's over here. I think it's uh, turned out pretty cute. So as far as the rest of the park, we haven't really touched anything else yet. I've been mostly focusing on little sections, trying to get those sections done, or at least mostly built out, kind of like I did with Dorney. So we're, we're doing one piece of the park at a time before we move on. I did, though, uh, put in the placeholders for Verbolton here. I tweaked the park layout just a little bit to get that to fit in. So far, no issues, though. The ride building fit in pretty nicely over here where it was supposed to, and that led nicely into these turnarounds where the path and bridge are going to go so that all kind of fit together really nicely so pretty happy with that still a lot of work to do with fixing the path layouts but these are just estimates like i keep saying um, i'm going to try to keep focusing on the front of the park first get that done before we move on any further so we're not going to see a lot of movement in the rest of the park yet but as far as the front gate area a little bit of a mixed bag liking the sesame street area not as high on the rest of it over here especially I don't know what to do with the the pathing over here. It's just a mess. So I need to figure out a good way to get peeps where they want to go. It is kind of like the real park though. Like if you remember your first time here, if you try to walk around this place without knowing where you're going, it's so easy to get lost. Despite the park kind of being just a big circle, some of the layout doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you aren't already familiar with it. You know, we're, we're seeing that uh, play out here at the front of the park. But anyway, that's just me rambling. Nothing to do with the build here. That's going to do it for this episode. I think next time we're going to start moving forward into some of these areas here with uh, Scotland pathing or maybe say from Pompeii. We kind of have a, a, a fork in the road here. We could go either way, depending on which direction around the park we want to travel as we go forward. But I guess we'll find out what happens next time. So hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching.